वेलकम टू अ न्यू एपिसोड ऑफ ईटी रिटेल कैफे बाय ईटी रिटेल वेयर वी हैव डिसाइडेड टू कवर 100 रिटेलर्स एंड टुडे वी हैव विद अस नॉन अदर देन गजल अलग एंड वरुण अलग आई मीन दे आर द फेमस नेम ऑफ द डीटूसी इंडस्ट्री एंड आई बेट मोस्ट ऑफ द हाउस होल्ड्स हैव देयर प्रोडक्ट्स एट देयर होम द ब्रांड व्हिच दे आर रनिंग इज मामा अर्थ So you know that Mama Earth started its journey from being a baby care brand, and they ventured into BPC industry, and they've captured the industry very well. Let's not spill the beans, myself. Let's introduce them. Welcome to ET Retail Cafe, and tell me about your journey, yourself, how it all started. What was the idea behind taking a big plunge into entrepreneurship? There are so many questions in my mind, actually. <laughs> okay, so. Um, you're right we started in uh, december of 2016 with mama earth uh, at that time we thought it was going to be a baby care brand but eventually listening to consumers um helped us expand much uh you know in a much larger way beyond what we had thought about uh when we started our journey we are now in operating in skin hair adult baby beauty all of it as a as a category with more than 300 products in a portfolio but we also not just have mama earth as a brand now we have five more brands uh, that we have built over the last 6 years we have the derma company which is a brand based on active ingredients backed by science to cater to skin concerns like acne pigmentation etc um we have aquologica which is based on deep hydration for your skin uh we have be blunt which gives you salon like hair at home by giving you the right kind of hair colors that suit indian hair um we also have dr shets which is operating um as a cusp between natural and active ingredients which enhances the performance of each other um so yeah i think we've built a lot of new brands and all of the brands just like mama earth are purpose based brands so like with mama earth we plant trees with every order that gets placed on our website um similarly uh, a derma co empowers children with science education where they don't have access to it with an aquologica we are trying to provide clean drinking water to villages where they don't um, get water or they have to travel kilometers together to get access to clean drinking water be blunt believes in empowering women by giving them vocational courses which helps them be financially independent so uh, that's that's the journey that we are on and uh, yeah we are very excited and uh, this journey really didn't start with an imagination of the fact that we will be here today and um i think the journey really started in 2014 when uh, our son agaste was born um and uh, you know as first time parents we wanted everything to be safe and right um, around our baby and um, uh, which is when the decision came to buying personal care products for him we started looking uh, at the market and the options which were available and with google in your hand you're able to research everything and when you research you realize that you know there are a lot of these conversations around how toxins uh, which are harmful chemicals that could potentially be carcinogens have been found in baby care products and how multiple large brands are facing legal charges in multiple countries because of that and that just as a parent it scares you right um you don't even want you know your nail to hurt your baby right um and in that stage when you hear about some of these things you you want then to find the right kind of options which you can apply to your baby because everything that we apply on our skin uh, gets transdermally absorbed into our blood streams right and um, in case of babies it's two times more because the skin is thinner um and which is uh, why you know to start with of course like any other consumer we started buying you know things from us uk started tagging along with you know uh, some masi mama or some friends who were going and coming back and asking them to get stuff um and over time we realized that this is any which way is a very stressful period for a parent and right? why should they need to go through all of this right why are brands not making this in india and uh, and we realize that actually there is no regulation around this uh, which requires brands to be strict around ingredients right and um if that that is being missing right 
um, people are optimizing for margins and costs and not exactly human health and environmental concerns and uh, that was there was something which which became the um, the underlying reason and driver for us to first have more conversations around this hey so why is someone not doing something about it to eventually actively thinking about why can't we do something about this right and when we started thinking about it we also realized that you know um in the market the other thing which was a clear miss was the fact that um most brands and companies were um importing for india not creating for india and um and um, you know we 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 are culturally different right we uh, we have our own problems we have our own ways to tackle them right now we have mosquitoes right now. um and you know there was no mosquito uh, spray for babies which was natural and uh, we uh, don't like to give anything to babies from their mouth till they are about 6 months yeah. old right now. we would rather rub hing and coconut oil on their tummies right now. um and you know for digestion and you know it's small things like that right now. and it seemed that brands were not listening right now. um and if they would have been listening probably we wouldn't have created mamaats today right now. but i think combination of those two strong drivers right made us feel that there is clearly a need Uh, for a brand which is toxin free right and a, for a brand which listens to indian consumers and crafts products for them based on their needs right? and, and that is how we decided to take the plunge but tell me one thing from building one brand to building a house of brands i mean it takes some courage right because you you guys are courageous group to be honest i mean you just left your jobs and then decided to take the entrepreneurship and then build house of brands so how was how has been the journey you there must be some challenges on on the on the road you how you faced those challenges what were those learn, learnings from those challenges so i think um, for us like i said right our our center point is always consumers um that's why we started the company because we felt nobody no brand was available to listen to them um and we said we are going to be that brand with mama earth and even going forward the more we were listening the more we were realizing that consumer actually behaves differently on different occasions um that he goes through in his or her life or day for that matter right if you're going for a wedding you might want to color your hair that lasts longer because you want to add that um you know that dressed up feel to yourself uh but on a daily uh, basis you might be using a natural face wash etc right um you might want a long lasting lipstick that stays because you're going to office and you don't want to take the pain of reapplying it and hence when the consumer is behaving differently and is looking for different options uh during his or her day um we just thought could we be that company which is able to deliver those uh to them um and when they were sharing these problems with us there were a lot of areas where we realized that this in, this proposition in itself or this need in itself is large enough for us to create a new brand around it rather than trying to make it a small part of of the other brand right so that's how i think the house of brand strategy got crafted for us it was again fueled by what consumers wanted what they were looking for something that they were not getting in the market so for example um you know like i said the dermaco aquilogica all of these brands are built on different needs uh, that we are able to cater for the consumer and um, yeah i mean that has been uh, the strategy just i think even for mama earth expanding from baby to the entire beauty and personal care segment they are the ones who helped us and even from one brand to now six brands consumers are the ones who have actually empowered us to do that but can you highlight upon the challenges and the learnings uh, on, on the on the course i think firstly uh, i would say we got the confidence to do this um because of the success that we saw on mama earth right um and that success not only sort of helped us um in in being able to take this decision but that success also helped us build an organization right and capabilities right which were which were required to build uh, and craft more brands right uh, over that course of course um many challenges right i mean 
um, whenever you're trying to create something new and, and you also have a core which is fast growing right? uh, the first challenge is how do you mold the organization and how do you create the right organization structures right? um, so that uh, there is there are people who are happy to work on a very small you know yet to born baby or even after it gets launched a very small business right um, and there are uh, there are people who can focus on building and driving the core right now uh, so i think the first challenge for us was how do we design the organization right right now um, second challenge for us was how do we um, define our rules in terms of how much time do we want to spend where in terms of shaping um, and giving time to some of these because um, the the younger brands then require founders energy a lot more because it's a it's a, there is a lot happening there and a lot of change and a lot of uncertainty that is required that is happening there and hence you know that focus while uh, this is where the large business lies so how do you manage both of them I think that was the second challenge that we saw and um, I think the third uh, challenge for us was how do we how do we sort of you know convert the learnings that we have had from the success of Mama Earth right, into technology and data products right? so that rather than um, these learnings staying in with people right, um, or on Excel sheets or on you know notes right, um, if they become products using which others who come in new right, can actually execute those learnings much faster right? um, then we are building an organization for a long term where the knowledge just keeps getting transferred right so i think we we focused a lot on that got the right data and technology team who has built amazing products for us which internally now the younger brands use and are able to execute those learnings in a much quicker manner so i think i would say those challenges so there must be some learnings from your previous career i mean you were uh, I mean, working with FMCG firms and Gazal was also associated with various firms prior to this thing. So what were those learnings and how are you bringing learnings from your past to this company at present? So I think, you know, for me, the big learnings that, um, you know, I've been able to use uh, while building the organization would have to be one, uh, you know, great companies are built by great people. Right? Uh, I think that is one learning I had while working at these uh, amazing companies, right? Which have built, you know, far-reaching and you know brands which have lasted for hundreds of years, right? Um, and I think that learning is what we have applied here as well. We've ensured that uh, we brought the best talent and best people into the best positions, right? Uh, who are driven to uh, help us uh, create the organization that we believe will be. Um, you know the 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 best FMCG company in the beauty and personal care segment that India has seen. Right? Uh, I think second learning for me has been uh, build amazing brands. Right? And finally, all FMCG companies are in the business of building brands. Right? And brands are built in the mind of consumers. Right? So um, the more we're able to focus on that and build strong brands, right? the more sustainable our business will be. Right? Uh, so I think those two will be the big learnings that I have identified from my career and tried to put them into action here. Nice. So I have actually um, been a corporate trainer followed by an artist and then a mom. So I think I, I've actually learned something that I've brought to the organization from all of these three roles. When I was a corporate trainer, the major skill that I learned there was how to deal with people and how to form great relationships because that goes a long way. And if you're able to connect with your team on a personal level and also um, you know, learn from each other, it's not just one way that you're saying they're executing, it's actually a vice versa process. So I think that is something um, that I've, I've strongly implemented here. Uh, second, I was an artist. So the creative freedom that I had, I've actually been able to use it 
in my role, which is developing products here within the organization, uh, bring that creativeness to life through the artworks, through how the products look, and, and what is it that really resonates with consumers? Because when you're, when you're making a painting, the attention to detail is so high that you're not able to put the brush down and say, okay, this is the final artwork that I'd envisioned, unless each and every precise point is, is, is delivered to, right? So I think that is something um, that that career has taught me. And of course, um, being a mom, I bring that paranoia uh, with me, that paranoia with the baby comes to office as paranoia for product and quality and everything around it has to be perfect. It, it cannot be that um, a product gets launched till the time I haven't used it for months together, a baby product as it hasn't been used by my kids for months together. And I'm saying this is, of course, apart from all the testing and all the hygiene that gets done uh, for each one of them. So, uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm really happy that some of these qualities are helping me be better at work. And build better brands. So uh, tell me one more thing. Uh, there must be some values that you must be building or maybe inculcating in the team to make, to make sure they build the brand for the future and the brand sustains for ages going, going ahead. So what are those values that you're inculcating in the employees of this company? It's some of the values which uh, you have as, a, um, as an individual and as, um, as you're growing up and automatically also start reflecting in the business and organizations that you're building, right? So for us, for example, as, as a middle class, um, you know, family and, and raised with uh, values of frugality, and, uh, that value has always kind of been there as part of uh, building this and, um, and ensuring that we're spending carefully and, uh, and we're being an efficient organization in all we do. And, uh, uh, has been um, a value that uh, we've bought. I think the second value that I would say is uh, um, is um, you know the the value of respect. And uh, again, it's something that uh, has been a part of our upbringing. And, uh, and we genuinely believe only if you respect all point of views, all information that you see in here, um, everyone around you and is when you're able to uh, humbly absorb uh, the best uh, information and make the best decisions. And so I think that's another value that we have tried to inculcate across the system. And I think I would add to that, that value of collaboration, because when you're working with a lot of people and as the team grows, um, very often it happens that people start working in silos because they are, they are more concerned about their function, their work, their job, right? But uh, to be able to efficiently scale a business or a brand, to have that one vision, collaboration becomes critical because only then you all will be able to move towards that one vision and be able to build towards it. So I think we also actively try um, and, and uh, we have a fabulous team who has, who has taken this value down and, and a lot of collaboration happens here at UNASA. They work with each other, yeah, that, that's nice. So my next question to you guys is that uh, there, there are, this technology is playing a major role in the retail these days. So how are you guys inculcating technology in your brand and uh, marrying the brand with the technology basically? And apart from that, we have seen the use of AI is increasing day by day. So how are you using AI in your daily routine when it comes to the functions, functioning of the organization? So I think technology is something which comes very, very naturally to us. We, uh, we are a company which started as a digital first, online first, you know, uh, organization and hence data technology is something that we integrate seamlessly across the organization. There are actually more than a hundred uh, business intelligent dashboards that the different functions and organization uh, uses. There are so many products around trend spotting, around, you know, um, share analysis that we have built internally, which get used extensively to understand how our brands are doing, what our consumers are saying. And, um, we're using, uh, from a consumer experience perspective, and 
um, you know, uh, technologies like uh, virtual reality or uh, some of the technologies like uh, scanning and uh, telling the consumer what's the right kind of, you know, products and regimes that would go for their skin. And, uh, we're also using a lot of, uh, um, you know, data analytics to figure out what is the right recommendation in terms of the products that needs to be shown to the consumers, uh, what according to their needs is the product that should be marketed to the, con uh, to the consumers rather than just marketing um, anything and everything there. And, um, so a lot of across the value chain, a lot of uh, use of technology across the organization. Right? And, um, and AI, of course, is, is a very, very interesting tectonic shift that we believe is happening um, you know, um, as we as we speak, and uh, we've already started using AI in some parts of our business. I mean, especially content and creative, and is where we are seeing the use of AI. And uh, but over the next three to five years, and we see a lot of uh, you know parts of our business being able to use the power of AI, right, from supply chain to finance to commercial, right. Uh, to, of course, the uh, technology team. So um, I think very excited about the future of uh, generative AI. So AI, you said it, it is going to take over in the future in a very big way. What if it takes your jobs as well? What will you guys do? <laughs> See, I still believe that you require intelligent people to be able to use technology in a certain way and be able to, you know, make the most out of the AI, as we call it. Um, but yeah, I think if it ever does, I would be on a beach probably painting and sipping some wine and like just enjoying myself. What else to do? Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, I still feel that it's far off. I really if, if AI can do our job, we'd be pretty happy. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll chill pill, right? And let AI do the job, right? I mean, uh, I wish it was that easy. Right? <laughs> the amount of uh, uh, finally AI works on whatever has been done in the past, and right? it only works on problems which has been solved in the past. Right? But reality is, every day we come up with problems, right, and and we face problems which have never been sort of solved, and we have to see it fresh and try different things to figure out what will work, right. So, but that the day that comes, right, uh, I agree, you'll find us on some beach just chilling. <laughs> so you guys are sorted, you have a vision. Yeah, yeah, we are, we are okay. <laughs> <laughs> so one, one more important thing which is needed to run the organization successfully and you guys have become unicorn uh, last to last year. So it's managing finances. How did you guys manage your finances so well that it has helped you grow? Like I said, right, we are, we are just frugal at heart, right? Aap frugal bollo, aap chindi bollo, and, <laughs> but matlab uh, ame, ame karch karne mein hai. And, and that that I think is is a value across the organization in terms of um, you know, and we define it internally in a very nice way that you know it is it is the way Indians buy grocery. And, uh, jaise, uh, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. And, um, you would, uh, you would firstly negotiate, right? and then you would also want some dhaniya mirchi as extra on your sabji, right? It doesn't matter where you sort of which class you're from, right? Uh, that's frugality. Right? Uh, it doesn't mean you don't buy things. It doesn't mean you don't spend, right? But it means you make sure that you get something at the best price, and you also sort of add your dhaniya mirchi as values, right? So. As long as you create a culture right, of frugality right, um, and, you know, um, automatically the organization shapes up into the right financial structure. Right? And I think secondly, we were very clear that, you know, from the, uh, from the beginning, right, uh, I'm a finance major as well as background. So, I mean, P&L, balance sheets come very naturally to me right? um, and I was very comfortable in driving the right unit economics and then sort of, you know, just ensuring that that gets drilled down uh, to the last person in the organization. So I think we've just been cognizant that if you drive it as a value, right, it will deliver an outcome. 
Yeah, and I think also we were very focused on measuring returns on every yeah. penny that was spent. And that also helped us, uh, along with all of that that Parun said, helped us come a long way because uh, at all points of time, you're cognizant. Yeah. You know you've spent X amount. What is it that you're getting in yeah. return? Is it worth it? Can it be better? Can it be squeezed, etc.? And that has also stayed with us from day one. Again, like he said, middle class values really help here because you don't know any other way. You can't just spend and like be okay with it. Um, uh, and that, that stays till today. So spending judiciously, judiciously, taking the right decisions at the right time actually helped you guys yes. nail the success that way. So my last question, what is the future that you see of an NASA consumer and how do you plan to shape it going ahead? If we want to be the... Uh, best, most loved FMCG player in the beauty and personal care space that India has seen. And uh, currently, honestly, there is no BPC focused FMCG in the country. And, um, almost all other countries from China to Korea to Europe to US, you would find there are focused BPC FMCG players which have created very large value uh, globally. And, um, we would like to be that company from India which does that right? uh, and which receives immense consumer love while doing that. Um, and I think the big difference that we want to also make is that, you know, not just create financial value during this process, but also give back to community very strongly. Right? Uh, I think we're amongst the only um, company in India which has this purpose-based brand building model, right? where as our brands scale, right? the more we grow, the more we give back. Right? The more Mama Earth grows, the more plastic we recycle, the more plants we you know, plant. Right? Um, the more Dermaco grows, the more kids we teach science. Right? The more bee plant grows, the more women we provide you know, vocational education to. The more Aqualogica grows, the more clean water plants we will put in villages right? and I think that is something which will differentiate us from a long term perspective right? that this is a company which has not just created financial value but also created a strong community and stakeholder impact right? uh, so that's I think that is, what is driven future by a purpose has. yes absolutely absolutely so before we close, we'll, let's do our rapid chat uh, quickly. Uh, you don't have, I won't give you the time to think in between. Uh, quickly, you'll have to answer the questions. So my first question I bombard at you is, which is your favorite business book and what have you guys learned from that? I'd say business I've learned by doing it. Uh, my favorite book is this book called Atomic Habits. I think I use some part of it every single day in how I think. It talks about... Uh, how to form new habits, which might seem difficult when you're just getting started. Uh, but how do you layer them over existing habits that are already strong enough and that don't require too much of an effort gets you started. So I think that has to be one of my favorite books. I think one of my favorite books would have to be Hard Thing About Hard Things. And um, uh, one lesson that I would say, and there are lots of you know micro lessons you can pick from that, but one lesson that I would say it has taught me is that, you know, as a leader, and, uh, you have to look at the situation and stage of your business and mold yourself accordingly. And, uh, you can be a peacetime CEO and behave very differently and you can be a wartime CEO and you have to behave very differently during those times. So I think that's something that I learned. You guys are running an omnichannel business, but where do you shop from, online or offline? Oh, I'm a 199% online shopper. Offline shopping for me happens probably twice a year at best. That do at airports. Um, I think fairly, fairly low shopper. It's <laughs> <laughs> fairly less shopping itself. But uh, I would say I'm 50-50. Right? Um, I still love to sort of, you know, uh, when I'm getting my suits or you know, when I'm getting my sneakers right? or when I'm buying a watch. Right? I, I want to get that touch and feel and hence, uh, you know, while for things which are more repeat kinds, I would go online, right? but things which, uh, you know, are, are higher level of involvement for me, right? I still go offline and I want to sort of, you know, get the experience before I buy. 
favorite retailer or the brand that you admire a lot? I think I love how Zara has built its brand and how it has also uh, been able to crack the omni-channel play with very, very relevant consumer experience. Uh, being a consumer, I just beat their physical stores and the, the long tail of products that they, they are able to display or be it their online and the convenience to use the site, etc. I think they've done a phenomenal job. For me, it would be DMART. Right? I think the way that business has scaled efficiently, right? um, keeping a very strong eye on the consumer right? and providing the right consumer experience without any frills, right? they've done a phenomenal job. People know that you are entrepreneurs, but what do you guys do in your free time? Nobody knows about it. I'd be surprised if people don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> We're fairly active on Apart our social from media. Instagram, <laughs> posting reels. What else do you guys do? No, I think uh, we believe in having fun. That's the foremost. If we feel that a little bit of dancing will help us have fun, we do that. If we feel that going on a date night will help us, we do that. Some days it's spending time with kids and you really look forward to it. So it's that. Uh, it depends on how we are feeling that particular day. But uh, yeah, we, we do a lot of things like simple, simple, regular things. And that brings us joy. There is no, I don't think we have any major complex habits. And uh, we like to read, we like to travel, we like to, you know, sing and dance, right? And we like to love and be it our family, our kids or each other. That's nice. Being entrepreneurs and being uh, from, from such a long time, you have some values, I mean, you have built some things. People look up to you. What do you think people should learn from you and build their own brands going ahead? Or the retailers who have been in the business for such a long time, what they can learn from you? I think first thing that I would say is uh, um, better to fail than to regret. Right? Um, I think not trying right? is the surest way of failing. Right? So if you have a thought or a dream right? uh, or an experiment that you want to do, right? just try it right? um, and get it out of the way. Right? Uh, it might succeed, it might fail, but you will know you did it. Right? Uh, I think that's uh, the one thing that I would say. And the second thing that I would say is there is no no shortcut to success. Hard work and perseverance right? um, are, are absolute needs to, to become successful in anything that you do. Right? So there is no silver bullet, so to say. Right? Uh, so work hard, work harder than you know, your competition and others who are working at that uh, zone right? and success will come to you. I totally agree with what he said. I think the um, from my own personal journey, I um, see in India, I believe everybody has a lot of dreams. They have certain uh, things they want to pick up, they want to experiment, they want to do it. But then at a lot of times, we let certain biases hold us back. We try and convince ourselves that for X, Y, Z reason, we will not be able to do this or achieve what we really want to or make our dreams come true. Um, my only suggestion would be don't let some of those biases hold you back. Um, convince yourself, take the first step. You will not know until you get into it and you do it. And once you get into it, trust me, the energy and the power that you get to make it work comes from within. So yeah, I mean, take that first step. So I must say that you, whatever you said, you have actually implied in your own business that way. It was a pleasure having you over here at ET Retail Cafe. I really enjoyed the conversation today. Hope you also enjoyed the way we enjoyed the conversation. And I really thank you, thank you again for coming over here. Hey, thank, thank you, you for having us. So next week, we'll be back with another retailer, another story. Until then, wait for us. Bye-bye. <laughs>